In early September, an amateur astronomer noticed something unusual in solar observation data, a faint smudge moving through space. That smudge turned out to be a brand new comet heading our way that we're now calling Comet R2 Swan. But Swan isn't arriving alone. The story just changed. Forget everything you knew about 3i Atlas. A minute ago, something else arrived. An object so massive, 100 times larger, that it is already visible with backyard telescopes. And the thing nobody is telling you is that it's actively targeting Atlas. This isn't a comet. Its composition is metallic, and its energy signature is off the charts. Scientists are now faced with data that suggests this isn't a coincidence. It's a rendezvous. What many have overlooked is that this cosmic event might not be for us to just watch. It might be happening because of us. The Titan in the Dark Just days ago, the world was focused on the interstellar enigma known as 3I Atlas. It was a cosmic mystery in its own right, an object that defied easy explanation with its strange bursts of speed and an orbit that seemed just a little too perfect. Many people were crazy about it, but what many overlooked was that Atlas was not alone. One minute ago, everything we thought we knew was shattered. The alert first came from the PanStars Observatory in Hawaii. An automated system flagged a new object, initially dismissed as a sensor glitch. The reason was simple. Its size was impossible. But as other observatories turned their lenses, the truth became undeniable. Blazing in from the direction of the Aquarius constellation was an object of staggering proportions. Designated C-2025, R2, a dry name for a cosmic monster. This new visitor is estimated to be over 60 miles in diameter, more than 100 times the size of Atlas. To put it mildly, this is like comparing a speedboat to an aircraft carrier. Almost immediately, the data revealed this was no ordinary comet. Spectrographic analysis, which breaks down the light an object reflects, showed signatures that left scientists speechless. Instead of the typical mix of ice and porous rock, the readings showed high concentrations of titanium, tungsten, and a cobalt alloy. You see, these are the very same materials humanity uses to build spacecraft and deep-sea submersibles. Metals chosen for their incredible strength and resistance to extreme temperatures and radiation. What many overlooked in the initial chaos was its energy signature. While comets glow by reflecting sunlight off gas and dust, this Titan was emitting its own faint but persistent energy, a low-frequency hum that our deep space network picked up as a rhythmic pulse. It wasn't natural thermal radiation. The most shocking fact is that it was structured. For people watching this, it feels like a science fiction movie come to life. An armored object, a cosmic fortress, was moving through our solar system. And then came the most terrifying revelation of all, its trajectory. It wasn't just passing by. It was on a direct, calculated intercept course with 3I Atlas. The object's path was not a long, graceful curve dictated by gravity alone. It was too straight, too precise. It was moving as if it had a destination. That destination was a specific point in space that 3i Atlas was also racing toward. The odds of two interstellar objects arriving from different points in the galaxy, heading to the same tiny patch of space at the same time, are not just astronomical. They are virtually zero. This wasn't a chance encounter. This was a rendezvous. Their impossible orbits pointed to an engineered event, a corridor in time. The thing nobody tells you about orbital mechanics is that space is unimaginably vast. The chances of two tiny objects from different star systems even entering our solar system within the same century are incredibly small. The chances of them arriving within the same year are nearly impossible. But what we are witnessing is something that breaks all statistical models. 3. I Atlas entered our system from the direction of the Sagittarius constellation. The new Titan, which astronomers began calling the Behemoth, arrived from the exact opposite side of the sky, from Aquarius. Imagine two ships leaving from opposite ends of the Pacific Ocean and arriving at the same tiny unmarked island within the same hour, without any communication. That's the scale of the impossibility we're dealing with. When astronomers plotted their trajectories, a chilling picture emerged. Both objects are scheduled to reach perihelion, their closest point to the sun, 
within a 10-day window in October. They will fly through a narrow solar corridor, a specific path through the inner solar system, at nearly the same time. But the most shocking fact is when this rendezvous is set to occur. Between October 8th and October 18th, both objects will be in solar conjunction. This means that from our viewpoint on Earth, they will be behind the Sun. The Sun's immense glare will create a total blackout, making it impossible for any of our ground-based or even space-based telescopes, including the James Webb, to observe them directly. It's the perfect cosmic blind spot. You can see this everywhere in strategic planning. If you want to do something in secret, you do it when nobody can watch. The convergence of these two objects during this specific 10-day blackout window has led many scientists to abandon the idea of coincidence altogether. To put it mildly, this looks like it was planned. The solar corridor isn't just a path, it's a destination. The solar blackout isn't just a natural event, it's cover. The two objects are not just passing by, they are meeting, and they are meeting precisely when and where we are unable to see them. This revelation has sent shockwaves through the scientific community, forcing them to confront a reality they have long avoided. We may be witnessing an intelligently coordinated event, but this cosmic meeting may not be the first of its kind. The Gobekli Tepe connection. As scientists analyzed the trajectory of the behemoth, they calculated its orbital period, the time it takes to complete one journey around the sun. The number they came up with was staggering, approximately 22,500 years. This meant that the behemoth is not a new visitor. It has been here before. Its last pass through our inner solar system would have occurred around the end of the last ice age, a time when humanity was just emerging from prehistoric darkness. Suddenly, ancient myths and mysterious archeological sites took on a new, terrifying relevance. Many people are crazy about ancient mysteries, but the connections here are too strong to ignore. Take Gobekli Tepe in modern-day Turkey. Dated to be over 11,000 years old, this massive temple complex is covered in sophisticated carvings of animals and celestial symbols. For years, archeologists have puzzled over one particular stone pillar, known as the Vulture Stone. It depicts a sky filled with cosmic symbols and what appears to be a swarm of objects falling from space. Researchers have long speculated that it records a comet impact that triggered a period of dramatic climate change. But what if it wasn't a comet? What if our ancestors witnessed the arrival of the behemoth? Imagine seeing an object 100 times larger than any comet, a shining metallic fortress dominating the night sky for weeks. Its glowing tail would have stretched from horizon to horizon. Such an event would have been terrifying, awe-inspiring, and unforgettable. It would have been seen as a message from the gods, a world-altering event that would be carved into stone and passed down through generations as myth and legend. You can see this everywhere in ancient cultures. Stories of gods descending from the sky, great battles in the heavens, and world-ending cataclysms. The thing is, we've always dismissed these as primitive superstitions. But the 22,000-year orbit of the behemoth suggests they might be something else entirely, a preserved memory, a historical record of a recurring cosmic event. We might not be the first humans to witness this rendezvous. We might just be the first to have the technology to understand what it truly is, an ancient, intelligent system returning on a schedule older than civilization itself. And it seems this visitor came prepared for our attention, a warning shot. As the behemoth drew closer, the world's space agencies decided to do more than just watch. According to leaked information from a source within the European Space Agency, a covert mission was launched. A small high-speed probe, codenamed Icarus, was sent on a flyby trajectory. Its goal was simple, get close enough to analyze the behemoth's composition and energy field. The probe was equipped with particle scanners and advanced imaging systems designed to pierce through the glowing tail and see what was underneath. It never reached its target. Just over one million miles from the behemoth, the Icarus probe's signal vanished. For a few frantic moments, Mission Control thought it was a malfunction. But the probe's final data packet told a different story. In the last millisecond of its transmission, it sent back a single distorted image. The image wasn't of the behemoth itself, 
but of a perfect reflection of the Icarus probe, as if it had been scanned and mirrored back. Then, nothing. The signal was gone. Engineers described the event as hitting an energy wall, a structured field that didn't just block the probe, but actively repelled it. The behemoth wasn't just big, it was defended. It was aware. In the wake of this incident, a global information blackout began. NASA, the ESA, and other national space agencies abruptly stopped public updates. Live data feeds from telescopes like the James Webb were quietly taken offline. When journalists and independent researchers filed information requests, they were met with silence or heavily redacted documents. The official reason given was the upcoming solar conjunction, but the timing was too suspicious. The thing nobody tells you is that this kind of coordinated silence is unprecedented. It suggests that what was discovered was so profound, so reality-shattering, that the decision was made to hide it. While the governments of the world went quiet, the planet itself seemed to react. Magnetometers detected strange rhythmic pulses in the Earth's magnetic field, perfectly in sync with the behemoth's energy emissions. Animal migration patterns went haywire, with birds and whales moving in bizarre, disoriented ways. It was as if the planet was resonating with the visitor's arrival. We were not just watching an object in space, we were feeling its presence. The pieces were coming together, painting a truly terrifying picture, a new reality. For people watching this unfold, it feels like the puzzle pieces are finally snapping into place, and the image they form is both magnificent and horrifying. Oumuamua, the first interstellar visitor from 2017, was the scout, a silent probe sent to observe. 3 Eye Atlas is the drone, smaller, faster, and performing active maneuvers. And the behemoth is the mothership, an ancient armored fortress carrying immense power and purpose. They are not separate, random events. They are parts of a single, coordinated system, a mission. The rendezvous during the solar blackout is not for them to meet each other. It's for them to perform an action while hidden from our view. What could that be? Some theories suggest a data transfer, with Atlas uploading information gathered on its journey. Others propose a refueling operation, using the sun's immense energy to power up for the next leg of a journey that spans millennia. But the most shocking theory connects back to Earth. The behemoth's 22,000-year cycle suggests a recurring visit. What if its purpose is to check on a long-term project? A project that began when it last visited at the dawn of human civilization. The strange engineered DNA sequences, the rhythmic energy pulses, the interaction with Earth's magnetic field, it all points to a terrifying possibility. The Anunnaki myths of Sumeria, the stories of gods descending from the heavens to create humanity, may not be myths at all. They may be a distorted memory of our own creation. The thing is, whether this is true or not, the arrival of this cosmic system forces us to confront our fundamental place in the universe. For centuries, we have spent our nights looking out at the stars, a species huddled around a fire, wondering if we are alone in the vast, silent darkness. It was a question born of loneliness and hope. But we may have been asking the wrong question all along. Perhaps the real, more chilling question is, how long have we been watched? The coordinated arrival of these objects, their trajectory too perfect to be random, timed precisely with our technological ability to finally see them, suggests something profound. It's as if our recent leap in science, our first radio broadcasts rippling out into the void, our probes touching the edges of our own solar system, may have finally tripped a cosmic alarm. We are no longer a primitive species confined to our planet, shouting into an empty room. We have stepped onto the galactic stage. We have become noticeable. Is this arrival a threat, a message, or simply the next chapter in a story that began before us? Let us know your thoughts below. Like and subscribe for more updates.